first met him, he kind of called me randomly, like out of the blue. He was just kind of like, hi, it's Michael. And I was like, hey. The bond between Michael Jackson and Macaulay Culkin, shrouded in scrutiny due to their disparate ages, remains a subject of relentless speculation. Many envy Culkin for his association with the illustrious king of pop, heralded as the pinnacle of musical greatness. Yet, the cruel hands of fate reveal a different tale. In the latest interview, Macaulay Culkin did not hesitate to share the truth about his friendship with Michael Jackson, affirming that he was also a fulcrum for the king of pop music. Let's see what Macaulay revealed. Macaulay Culkin's reflection on his friendship with Michael Jackson offers a nuanced glimpse into a relationship often overshadowed by controversy and speculation. Despite the public scrutiny and the weighty implications of Jackson's past, Culkin's perspective suggests a bond that transcended societal norms and expectations. For Culkin, the friendship with Jackson was an integral part of his upbringing as a child star. Amid the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, their connection provided a sense of normalcy, a refuge from the relentless spotlight that often accompanied their respective careers. While outsiders may have been quick to judge the age gap between them, Culkin emphasizes that their bond was rooted in genuine companionship, devoid of any ulterior motives or sinister intentions. The scrutiny surrounding their friendship was undoubtedly heightened by the allegations leveled against Jackson, allegations that cast a dark shadow over his legacy and colored perceptions of his interactions with minors. Yet, Culkin's assertion that their relationship was normal challenges prevailing narratives, urging observers to reconsider preconceived notions and acknowledge the complexities of human connection. Macaulay Culkin's recent appearance on Michael Rosenbaum's Inside of You podcast provided a rare and candid insight into his much-discussed friendship with the late king of pop, Michael Jackson. Released to the public on Tuesday, Culkin's words shed light on the dynamics of their relationship and offered a perspective often overlooked amidst the sensationalism and controversy that surrounded Jackson's life. Culkin's remarks, delivered with a sense of nonchalance and sincerity, served to demystify his bond with Jackson. To him, their friendship was devoid of the spectacle that typically accompanies interactions with such a globally renowned figure. Despite Jackson's status as the most famous person in the world, Culkin emphasized the ordinariness of their connection, describing it as normal and mundane. Such a portrayal challenges the prevailing narratives that often depict their relationship through the lens of intrigue and suspicion. Acknowledging the inevitable questions raised by their significant age gap, Culkin remained steadfast in his assertion that the authenticity of their friendship transcended societal norms and expectations. While outsiders may have scrutinized the nature of their bond, Culkin's resolute stance echoed a sentiment of defiance against the need to justify the dynamics of personal relationships. You don't have to explain your friendships to people, he remarked, encapsulating a belief in the inherent autonomy of human connections. Their bond, forged in the early 90s following Culkin's meteoric rise to stardom with the release of Home Alone in 1990, emerged as a beacon of solace in the midst of Culkin's newfound celebrity status. At the time of their meeting, Culkin found himself thrust into the spotlight at a young age, grappling with the overwhelming pressures and expectations that accompanied his rapid ascent to fame. Despite the adulation from fans and the acclaim of Hollywood, Culkin's success rendered him isolated from his peers, particularly those at his Catholic school. In this context of alienation, Jackson emerged as a confidant, a fellow traveler on the tumultuous journey of fame. For Culkin, Jackson's outreach was more than a gesture of celebrity camaraderie. It was an expression of empathy and solidarity. Jackson, himself intimately acquainted with the perils of childhood fame, recognized in Culkin a kindred spirit, someone who understood the unique challenges and complexities of their shared experience. Culkin's assertion that Jackson wanted to protect him underscores the depth of their connection, 
transcending mere celebrity acquaintance to embody a genuine concern for Culkin's well-being amidst the relentless glare of the public eye. In recounting Jackson's role in his life, Culkin paints a portrait of a compassionate mentor, a guiding presence in the tumultuous landscape of fame. Their bond, rooted in mutual understanding and shared experiences, provided Culkin with a sense of belonging and validation amid the isolation of stardom. Culkin's description of himself as a peerless person within his Catholic school underscores the profound sense of alienation he experienced, further highlighting the significance of Jackson's presence in his life. Describing Jackson as hilarious, generous, gentle, charming, silly, and sweet, Culkin reveals the lighter side of their friendship, characterized by laughter, warmth, and shared moments of levity. Jackson's penchant for prank-calling people adds a playful dimension to his personality, showcasing a mischievous streak that belied his iconic status. Culkin's reflection on why Jackson gravitated towards him offers insight into the dynamics of their friendship. Culkin's indifference towards Jackson's fame, his ability to see beyond the celebrity facade and treat Jackson as a regular person, underscored a refreshing authenticity that resonated with Jackson. Culkin's nonchalant attitude towards fame served as a refreshing departure from the adulation and idolization that Jackson typically encountered, fostering a sense of camaraderie rooted in mutual respect and understanding. In essence, Culkin's assertion that he treated Jackson like just that guy highlights the simplicity and purity of their bond. In a world where Jackson was often revered as an icon, Culkin's ability to see him as a fellow human being, devoid of the trappings of fame, forged a connection based on genuine companionship and shared experiences. Moreover, Culkin's observation that everyone's always thoroughly impressed by him underscores the pervasive impact of Jackson's fame on his interactions with others. In contrast, Culkin's unassuming demeanor offered Jackson a rare opportunity to be seen and appreciated for who he truly was, a sentiment that Culkin believes strengthened their friendship and fostered a sense of mutual trust and camaraderie. Macaulay Culkin's multifaceted relationship with Michael Jackson's family, particularly with Jackson's daughter Paris, provides a captivating narrative that intertwines friendship, familial bonds, and a sense of protective kinship. As the host of his own podcast, Bunny Ears, Culkin's platform serves as a creative outlet for his eclectic interests and quirky personality. While the podcast is currently on hiatus, it reflects Culkin's desire to connect with his audience on a personal level, offering insights into his life, interests, and unique perspective on the world. Culkin's role as godfather to Jackson's three children, including Paris, underscores the depth of trust and affection that existed between him and the late King of Pop. The fact that he shares a matching tattoo with Paris serves as a tangible symbol of their bond, a permanent reminder of the special connection they share. Paris's heartfelt birthday message to Culkin on Instagram in August further illustrates the enduring nature of their relationship. Her words convey a deep sense of love and admiration for Culkin, affirming the significance of his presence in her life and the close bond they share. Culkin's protective stance towards Paris, as expressed during his appearance on Mark Maron's WTF podcast, speaks volumes about the depth of his commitment to her well-being. His reluctance to delve into specifics about their relationship reflects a desire to shield Paris from undue scrutiny and maintain the privacy of their personal connection. However, Culkin's admiration for Paris is palpable in his description of her as tall and beautiful and smart. His affectionate tone and protective instincts underscore the genuine love and admiration he holds for her, emphasizing the importance of their relationship in his life. An unforgettable memory between Macaulay Culkin and Michael Jackson took place during a serious historical trial. As Macaulay Culkin navigated the solemn corridors of the courthouse during Michael Jackson's 2005 trial, he couldn't shake the weight of the moment. 
Each step carried the gravity of the accusations against his friend, juxtaposed against the memories of their cherished times together. Culkin, now a grown man, found himself summoned to the stand to testify on behalf of the pop icon, thrust into the center of a legal maelstrom that threatened to engulf his recollections of their friendship. On that fateful day, as Culkin awaited his turn to testify, a short recess provided a brief respite from the tense courtroom proceedings. Seizing the opportunity for a moment of solitude, Culkin sought refuge in the quiet of the restroom. Yet fate had other plans as he encountered Jackson himself in an unexpected twist of fate. The air in the restroom seemed charged with anticipation as Culkin and Jackson locked eyes, their reunion cloaked in the shadow of impending legal proceedings. Despite the weight of the situation, a flicker of familiarity and warmth sparked between them, a silent acknowledgement of the bond they shared. We better not talk. I don't want to influence your testimony. Jackson's words broke the tension, laden with a mix of concern and understanding. In that fleeting moment, their shared history spoke volumes, a testament to the complexities of friendship in the face of adversity. A soft chuckle escaped Culkin's lips, a bittersweet blend of nostalgia and resignation. Their laughter, though brief, echoed with the echoes of simpler times, a poignant reminder of the innocence lost amidst the turmoil of the present. With a gentle embrace, Culkin and Jackson exchanged a silent farewell, their parting words unspoken yet deeply felt. As they returned to the courtroom, each carried the weight of their shared memories, intertwined with the uncertainty of what the future held. Despite the persistent inquiries and probing speculation that have followed Macaulay Culkin for years, he has remained steadfast in his denials of any abuse by Michael Jackson. In a candid and resolute interview with Esquire in February 2020, Culkin once again found himself confronted with the weight of accusations and insinuations surrounding his relationship with the late pop icon. With a measured tone and unwavering conviction, Culkin addressed the elephant in the room head-on, dispelling any lingering doubts or misconceptions. Look, I'm going to begin with the line. It's not a line, it's the truth. He never did anything to me, Culkin asserted, his words carrying the weight of years of scrutiny and speculation. In the face of mounting pressure and the relentless scrutiny of public opinion, Culkin's unwavering stance spoke volumes, a testament to the strength of his convictions and the authenticity of his experiences. I never saw him do anything he continued, his voice tinged with a mixture of frustration and resignation. And especially at this flashpoint in time, I'd have no reason to hold anything back. As the interview delved deeper into the complexities of his relationship with Jackson, Culkin's words carried a raw honesty and vulnerability, transcending the confines of celebrity and fame. The guy has passed on, he acknowledged solemnly, a poignant reminder of the finality of Jackson's legacy. If anything, I'm not going to say it would be stylish or anything like that, but right now is a good time to speak up. In a world fraught with uncertainty and moral ambiguity, Culkin's unwavering commitment to truth and integrity stood as a beacon of light, a testament to the enduring power of honesty in the face of adversity. And if I had something to speak up about, I would totally do it he affirmed, his words carrying the weight of personal conviction and moral clarity. But no, I never saw anything. He never did anything. In the revealing interview with Larry King in 2004, Macaulay Culkin offered a rare glimpse into his relationship with Michael Jackson, shedding light on the complexities and nuances of their bond. At just 23 years old, Culkin navigated the delicate balance between loyalty to his friend and the public scrutiny that often accompanied their association. As Culkin sat across from Larry King, the weight of the conversation hung heavy in the air, punctuated by the soft glow of studio lights. With a thoughtful expression, he delved into Jackson's enigmatic persona, offering insights into the reclusive world of the pop icon. He's not a very social person 
He's been sheltered for the last 30 years, Culkin revealed, his words tinged with a mixture of empathy and understanding. In that moment, the veil of celebrity fell away, revealing the vulnerability and isolation that often lay beneath Jackson's larger-than-life facade. Culkin's reflections offered a window into Jackson's world, a world shaped by fame, scrutiny, and the relentless pressure of public perception. Despite his status as a global superstar, Jackson remained an enigma, grappling with the complexities of human connection and social interaction. When pressed about Jackson's controversial habit of befriending children, Culkin navigated the question with a delicate balance of candor and discretion. He's not very good at communicating with people, Culkin explained, his words echoing with the weight of personal experience. As the conversation turned to the topic of Jackson's admission to sharing beds with young guests, Culkin's response was measured yet revealing. When he says things like that, he doesn't understand why people react the way they do, he remarked, offering a glimpse into Jackson's perpetual state of innocence and naivety. Innocence and naive. Culkin's parents, including his estranged father Kit Culkin, seemingly harbored no qualms about their son's friendship with the enigmatic pop icon. To Culkin, Jackson was more than a mere celebrity acquaintance. He was a kindred spirit, trapped within the confines of a psychological neverland, crafted by the relentless machinations of the entertainment industry. As Culkin navigated the labyrinthine corridors of fame, his own journey bore striking parallels to Jackson's tumultuous trajectory. Both catapulted into the spotlight at tender ages, they shared the burden of precocious fame, their childhoods sacrificed at the altar of stardom. Culkin was heralded as the quintessential child star with his breakout role in Home Alone, and Jackson, the prodigious talent who rose to prominence as the lead singer of the Jackson Five, was inexorably bound by the weight of their shared experiences. Yet, beneath the veneer of celebrity, both Culkin and Jackson grappled with the ghosts of their pasts, haunted by the specter of unfulfilled childhoods. Culkin's adult life, marred by whispers of drug abuse, encounters with the law, and the relentless scrutiny of tabloid headlines mirrored Jackson's own descent into the depths of public scrutiny and speculation. Their friendship, forged amidst the tumult of fame and fortune, served as a lifeline amidst the storm, a beacon of solace in a world fraught with uncertainty. Culkin, with his boyish charm and infectious charisma, found in Jackson a kindred spirit, a fellow traveler on the road less traveled. The genesis of their friendship, shrouded in mystery and speculation, spoke volumes about the depth of their connection. For Culkin, Jackson was more than a mentor or confidant. He was a surrogate older brother, a guiding light in the darkness of fame's unrelenting glare. As he reminisced about their initial encounter, Culkin's words carried a sense of nostalgia tinged with a touch of wonder, transporting listeners back to a time when innocence still reigned supreme. I met him backstage while doing the Nutcracker before Home Alone, and he mentioned something about it, Culkin recounted, his voice suffused with the echoes of a bygone era. The memory of that fateful meeting lingered, a serendipitous twist of fate that would forever alter the course of his life. In the wake of Culkin's meteoric rise to fame with his breakout role in Home Alone, Jackson reached out once more, extending a spontaneous invitation to his storied estate of Neverland. He just called me up and asked me to come to his house. It was this weird out-of-the-blue thing, Culkin mused, his words colored by a sense of bemusement at the unexpected turn of events. For Culkin... Jackson's allure lay not in his status as a global superstar, but in his childlike wonder and innocence. At the time, Culkin said he saw Jackson as a kid-like adult, not a superstar. The narrative unfolded, offering a poignant reminder of the intrinsic bond that united them. As Culkin navigated the labyrinthine corridors of fame, Jackson emerged as a steadfast companion, a kindred spirit amidst the tumult of celebrity.
their friendship, forged in the crucible of shared experiences and mutual admiration, transcended the confines of fame and fortune. Now, at 39 years old, Culkin's accounts of their friendship remained unchanged, a testament to the enduring power of their bond. Through the trials and tribulations of life in the spotlight, Culkin and Jackson found solace in each other's company, navigating the complexities of fame with a shared sense of camaraderie. The final chapter in the saga of Michael Jackson's life unfolded amidst a veil of solemnity and reverence as he was laid to rest in a private ceremony at a heavily guarded cemetery in Los Angeles. The anticipation hung thick in the air as guests, including luminaries such as 77-year-old Dame Elizabeth Taylor, gathered in the sweltering heat, patiently awaiting the arrival of the Jackson family at the Forest Lawn Cemetery. Despite the scorching temperatures, the sense of anticipation and solemnity pervaded the atmosphere, casting a somber pall over the proceedings. As the ceremony commenced, more than an hour behind schedule, the hushed whispers of attendees mingled with the gentle rustle of leaves, echoing the weight of the moment. Against the backdrop of the sprawling cemetery grounds, speakers at the event, including civil rights leader the Rev. Al Sharpton, offered poignant reflections on Jackson's life and legacy, their words a testament to the profound impact he had on the world around him. Meanwhile, the soulful strains of Gladys Knight's voice soared through the air, her melodic tribute a fitting homage to Jackson's enduring musical legacy. Musical legacy, in stark contrast to the star-studded public memorial held at L.A.'s Staples Center, today's funeral was a private affair shielded from the prying eyes of the public and the glare of TV cameras. Amidst the intimate gathering of family and close friends, Jackson's final journey drew to a close, a quiet and dignified farewell to a man whose life had been defined by the relentless pursuit of perfection and the enduring power of music. The Jackson family, in a rare departure from their usual guardedness, allowed a live video feed of guests arriving providing a fleeting window into the intimate gathering of family, friends, and luminaries. The anticipation reached a crescendo as the live video feed captured the arrival of esteemed guests, their somber demeanor a poignant reflection of the solemn occasion. Yet, as the hearse carrying Jackson's body made its solemn entrance, the feed was abruptly cut, plunging viewers into a silence punctuated only by the gentle hum of anticipation. Undeterred by the sudden interruption, an airborne camera provided by L.A. broadcaster KTLA continued to transmit live footage, offering a glimpse into the heart of the ceremony. The scene that unfolded before viewers' eyes was one of quiet reverence and solemnity, as a coffin adorned with white flowers was reverently carried to the front of the congregation, a poignant symbol of Jackson's final journey. Amidst the sea of mourners, Around 200 guests had been thought to have been invited to the event, their presence a testament to the profound impact Jackson had on the world around him. Among those in attendance were former child actor Macaulay Culkin and his girlfriend, actor Mila Kunis, their presence a poignant reminder of the enduring bond between Jackson and the Hollywood community. Though not captured on camera, other luminaries, including Motown giant Stevie Wonder and music producer Quincy Jones, were also in attendance, their presence a testament to Jackson's far-reaching influence and enduring legacy. In a stunning revelation that sent shockwaves reverberating across the globe, the L.A. County coroner delivered a bombshell announcement that thrust Michael Jackson's untimely death back into the spotlight. With a solemn gravity befitting the gravity of the moment, the coroner's office declared that Jackson's passing had been ruled as a homicide, the result of acute propofol intoxication. The news sent ripples of disbelief and outrage rippling through the public consciousness, reigniting simmering questions surrounding the circumstances of Jackson's demise. At the center of the maelstrom stood Dr. Conrad Murray, Jackson's personal physician, whose role in administering the powerful sedative loomed large over the unfolding investigation. 
For weeks, whispers of negligence and malpractice had swirled around Murray, casting a dark shadow over his once respected reputation. Now, with the coroner's ruling casting fresh scrutiny on his actions, the prospect of criminal charges loomed large on the horizon, threatening to irrevocably alter the course of his life. In the wake of the coroner's announcement, the spotlight shifted once more to Murray, whose every action and decision leading up to Jackson's tragic demise came under intense scrutiny. Questions abounded, swirling like a tempest in the public consciousness, demanding answers and accountability in equal measure. As the investigation into Jackson's death intensified, the world watched with bated breath, waiting for justice to be served and closure to be found. And though the road ahead remained fraught with uncertainty and complexity, one thing remained abundantly clear. The legacy of Michael Jackson, the King of Pop, would endure, a timeless testament to the enduring power of music, even in the face of tragedy and loss. What do you think about the relationship between Macaulay Culkin and Michael Jackson? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.